I gave this presentation about the rise of ash. As the title says, a valuable green resource with a great potential. What is rice husk ash? Rice husk ash is obtained by burning the protective outer cover of the rice paddy grain. That's called rice husk. When you burn it, you get rice husk ash. Rice husk ash can be used as a supplementary cementitious material. It can be added to concrete instead of cement to increase the strength and durability. Our research so far indicates that optimum durability is obtained when 7 to 10 percent by weight of cement is replaced by RHA. RHA does not have any specific code but the properties of RHA are very close to microsilica silica fumes and, and we follow ASTM 1240 for <coughs> determining the properties. Now this is a picture of rice husk, rice husk ash and rice husk, ash microsilica. How RHA improves the concrete? It's very well known that OPC reacts with water to form two products, calcium silicate hydrate and calcium hydroxide. Calcium silicate hydrate gives strength and durability to the concrete, whereas calcium hydroxide, it causes a negative effect in the concrete. It's, it reacts with the CO2 to causing efflorescence leaving the concrete vulnerable to sulfate chemical <coughs> attacks. How RHA improves the concrete? Addition of RHA increases the calcium silicate hydrate and it decreases the calcium hydroxide. The formula is given which shows the reaction of conversion of calcium hydroxide into calcium silicate hydrate. The major benefits of this reaction are higher strength, reduced efflorescence, and reduced sulfate and chemical attacks. RHA can be used in two distinct ways. One, to create high performance concrete where RHA is added to the cement to increase the strength of the concrete and two to create green concrete wherein RHA is used as a substitute of cement. A detailed study carried out by Ms. Nazia Pathan of SS College of Engineering Mumbai compared the strength and durability of concrete sum supplemented with microsilica silica fumes to that of concrete supplemented with RHA. The numbers which are going to come forward no way prove that RHA <coughs> is a superior product than microsilica silica fumes. If you can see the figures, this is M70 grade concrete. By adding 10% RHA, we get a strength increase of about 7%. This graph shows the strength 
over a period of 90 days, the maximum strength gain is in between 56 and 90 days. By use of RHA in concrete, water impermeability can be increased by up to 60 percent. The same with the decrease <coughs> of the sulfate and chloride <coughs> attacks to amount of 60 percent. Addition of RHA to concrete decreases the heat of hydration to about 20 percent. Now, the interesting figures, the availability of RHA for concrete in 2011 was approximately 18 million tons. This is a very substantial figure and almost all of this is in the unorganized sector. The worldwide paddy production was about 730 million tons, which correlates to about 35 million tons of RHA. And the half of this production of rice paddy is parboiled rice. Parboiled rice uses rice husks to cook the rice paddy. They use the boilers to generate steam and in the process they generate rice husk ash. And this 50 percent correlates to 18 million tons. The rest of 18 million tons, they are not utilized properly in any manner. The rice husks available also, they go as landfills or they are burnt in open air just to destroy them. Cement production leaves about a thousand kgs of greenhouse gases for every thousand kgs of cement produced, approximately. <coughs> Global cement production emits about 400 million tons of greenhouse gases and if RHA is used in concrete, we could save about 40 million tons at the rate of 10 percent usage. Conservatively, if we take the price at 10 euros per ton of carbon thread, RHA in concrete could earn up to 400 million per annum. Conclusion, RHA is a superposal land and a supplementary test material with great potential. Silica film, what it did in mid 70s, fly ash, what it did in mid 80s, RHA can transform the concrete maybe in this decade. Finally, RHA makes concrete better and durable buildings, re reducing greenhouse gas emissions and it's an eco-friendly, cementitious material. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Narayan. You did say that uh, your uh, presentation was going to be brief and that you would leave some uh, time for questions. So we now have 17 minutes for questions. Yep. So does anybody have any questions? Please. Yes, uh, the leaders are from the camp. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, a lot of different rice quality. Uh, is the consistency of the rice so good that you can say uh, this ash is consistent over time and locally consistent? Yeah. Uh, basically, the husks, they are volatile matters and about 90% of the constituent of the husk is silica. If you take any grade of rice paddy, you get that range, could be plus minus 
So when you burn it, you get that quality of ash, irrespective of the quality of paddy what we are speaking about. Thank you. Uh, yes, in the back. Yes, Mike. Yeah. Um, in the pictures, you show some rice, yeah. ash, and then a powder. Yeah. Is, is there a grinding process? Or? Yeah. And, and then the second question, then that will be the answer. Uh, what's about the, uh, the burning of the rice? Yeah, that's a very crucial part. Yeah. That's the most important part because most of the rice husks, they are not burnt properly to make it reactive. Even though if they have the silica content of maybe more than 85% or maybe 90%, the quality of ash depends upon the burning uh, process. And that's very crucial. Can you give us a little bit more detail about that? Well, I can say something is that the furnace has to be controlled at a temperature which is less than 800 degrees centigrade. If the temperature increases more than 850 degrees centigrade, the silica transforms into crystalline crystalline silica which becomes non-reactive and this is the key to it how to burn it completely in a short duration of time by keeping the temperature constant below 800 degrees and sorry what about the grinding the answer yes what about the grinding uh, effect because of, you know, silica fume is a fume naturally yeah here you're actually in a grinding process and obviously you have some influence on the the yeah, see what we get over here in the second picture, rice ash, the particle size are pretty large. And if we have these large particle sizes, it's very difficult to mix in the cement. That's why we have to grind it. The properties do not change, the surface area remains the same. For example, 15,000 uh, meter square, if we have in the rice ash which is unprocessed, the same 15,000 remains in the grinded rice ash. So it's the particle sizes which is changing only. And that's necessary to mix with concrete. Uh, last night we also had a quick chat, and uh, it's um, it's also critical that the um, the rice husk ash is cooled in a specific fashion to um, uh, retain its properties. Can you yeah. just give us some details about that? Yeah, the the basis to production of good quality of rice ash is number one to burn it below 800 degrees centigrade. Number two, burn it as quickly as possible complete combustion and number three cool it down to room temperature as soon as possible so this is the these are the three key factors right so it's actually qu quite a complicated process to it's quite this complicated. to yeah. high, high standard yeah yes please. Um, Charles A. Nell it's very interesting a uh, question how widespread in terms of commercial application is RHA and to what degree do you see the barriers to it growing being and what are the challenges? See, firstly, RHA doesn't have a code which could be uh, represented to mix in the concrete. We are piggybacking microsilica, silica fumes because of the characteristics and the chemical properties. That is number one. Number two, it is in the unorganized sector, wherein you get maybe a unit could produce about uh, two tons of RHA a day, or maybe five tons of RHA a day. And added together, we are talking about 18 million tons. So you can imagine like the uh, different lots the different uh, grades of uh, RHA you would be getting from the different factories. <coughs> so
So this has to be organized. Um, and also, very interestingly, uh, last night you, you were kind enough to give us two separate name cards, business cards. Yeah. Uh, one of which was uh, concerning this particular business and the use of brass husk ash yeah. in the cement industry. I wonder if you can uh, tell us about the other hat that you wear. Well, uh, I've been working on rice ash for about, about 15 years now, different applications. The best application which I found out was as an insulin for the metal industry. The rice ash, what you see in picture two, this ash is used in the steel mills to keep the metal hot. Continuous casting. In continuous castings. And for example, a ladle which holds the metal, if the capacity is about 300 tons and the pouring time, meaning the time to empty the ladle is about 50 minutes and the service temperature is about 1600 degrees centigrade without any insulin on top, the metal could lose temperatures up to 30 degrees. So if we start at 1600 by the end of 50 minutes or 55 minutes, we could end up with a metal flow which is 1570. But if you use RHA as an insulin, the temperature drops only 5 degrees. You can save a lot of energy on uh, this by using RHA. You don't have to superheat the metal by extra 25 degrees. Um. I was very interested to hear about this because it also has uh, some you know, uh, effects on the composition of the slag in that this is a, obviously a very uh, high source of uh, silica. silica. Yeah. Um, just in addition to that, uh, what is the purity level of this in terms of silica? What's, what are the other... Uh, it's more than 90% silica. What else is in there? Well, all, uh, I can give you the composition. But uh, to sum up, it's about 90% silica, about 2% carbon, 4% goes for volatile matters. So the, uh, like other remaining 4% could be uh, MGO or K2O or maybe a 2 3 <coughs> something like that, a CAO. Now the, the insulating application that you have in the steel industry, you actually export your rice husk ash or rice husk, yeah, yeah. rice husk ash around the world, and particularly yeah. to Russia. Yeah. Have you seen very much interest in um, using the material in the cement industry around the world? Uh, you mean rice ash? Mm -hmm. Well, the cement industry is a very big area wherein rice ash could be used. I, I project in two ways. The first is the use of rice husks. The rice husk, the first picture. This is a very good source of energy, which is having about 60% calories of coal. You burn this, and you get about 22% ash. You take that ash, put in your cement. You earn in two ways. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is a, a very low value, relatively low value, high bulk, low density Correct. Uh, commodity. Correct. So it's not going to travel well, is it? Uh, the rice husks? Yeah. Well, it's like fly ash. You have to concentrate locally more. So uh, if you have uh, lots of mills, rice mills around a cement plant, that could be the best scenario. Or else you could buy briquetted rice husks, which is kind of pellets. Like you have wood pellets, same way we have rice husk pellets also. And they could fit up to 28 tons in a container, 20 feet container, or 27, whatever. And so that can be used then as an alternative fuel? Yeah, and that can be used in a, as an alternative fuel. And what you get out of uh, the ash 
<coughs> you don't have to throw it. In turn, you use it directly in your cement <coughs> to make it more reactive. Uh, yes, please. Uh, Carlos Medina, Samix. Uh, back to the presentation, you mentioned there are two ways to introduce it, either the cement mix, yeah. or green concrete. And also we have it uh, uh, as an alternative fuel. Where do you see uh, it at, adds more value? Which one of the three options? See, uh, the cement industry, the ready mix, they use the end product directly. The first is the alternative fuel. <coughs> now, if if you are having a furnace, if you are having <coughs> the use of this fuel, then only we talk about uh, the husks as an alternative fuel. Given a scenario, you have a furnace, you are burning rice husks. You are in a best uh, situation, wherein you pay for the fuel, what ash you get, you use that ash to improve the quality of your cement. So you are suggesting that you should take, take this on as a fuel, you can add the value as a fuel, then you can add the values or retain the value as a Correct. Ash, myself here, ash. Correct. Doesn't work. Hang on. Here uh, Usually, when you uh, fire alternative fuels in the, in the cement kiln or kassan, then uh, the ash becomes an integrated part of the raw material. We have tried several times to develop systems where you have, uh, so to speak, isolated uh, furnaces to burn alternative fuels to recover the ash. But uh, it does not make sense unless uh, you use uh, gasifier technology so that you uh, bring in uh, yeah, a little more complicated to explain. <coughs> but uh, direct firing uh, See, if we can have power plants, power generation plants, based on rice husks. That's a different So you can generate the power yourself, use the ash in the cement industry, feed yourself with the power. Yeah. Which, which feeds through perfectly to uh, an advertisement for the Global SEM Power Conference <laughs> in one month's time in London, which is all about uh, providing power for the cement industry through captive power plants and also waste heat recovery. Um, maybe you should come back and give a presentation and slightly tweak this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Please. Yeah, uh, you, you mentioned this uh, disorganized market, huh? Yeah. Uh, how would you organize it? Sorry? How would you organize it? I live on the audience. It's very difficult. We are talking about 18 million tons of rice ash availability. I have 25 million. Okay, 25 million. <laughs> so, like it's very difficult. A, a unit could produce two tons of RHA a day. Typical, or maybe five tons. And you have to collect, you have to select the uh, factories who are having good furnaces. We, we had it organized at the time. I, I, I used to sell um, refractory bricks made out of rice husk ash mm -hmm. uh, for the long uh, process kilns in the 70s in North America. I sold these bricks. Um, and it was pretty well organized in, Ita in Italy, uh, where they knew exactly, and in Spain, where they knew exactly what kind of material you needed and how you had to fire it and so on. Uh, so, it, 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 it's, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a real challenge, but I think that uh, this is where I think the modern producers of, of concrete binders should start getting involved. Uh, that means not the clickerist, like I said this morning, but, but uh, <coughs> the people who are really saying, okay, let's make a really interesting binders, and composite binders especially. Like, so, uh, I think you, you mentioned that this morning also, 
you know, you, you're going to be a supplier of all kinds of different ingredients for somebody who doesn't know how to do it. I have a different story also. Out of the production of uh, 170 million tons of rice paddy, 50% of production is boiled rice, cooked rice. And the rice husk of this 50% is 80 million tons, which I have like projected or I have stated. The raw rice, which is just the removing of the shell, a different way of processing rice paddy, they have the rice husks available with them. And those are large mills. So you can have your own captive power plant, depending upon your size, availability of rice husks, and you can generate your own ash. That's a better preposition. By the way, the word ash is uh, a terrible word for such a very high value product. Thank you, thank you. I'll try to replace it. <laughs> you need a brand. You know, no, it's, brand. A, uh, it, it, it's uh, very confusing because you have uh, rice husk ash or you have re reactive rice husk ash. Those are total different Total words. different thing. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, yeah. so the word ash is already a terrible thing because you, you burn it to death. death you know, there's nothing left in the reactivity. <coughs> So uh, there is a better word for it. Uh, I'd greatly appreciate it if we can come back to the difference between those two. But in oh, no, just uh, uh, as a general guidance on the picture of the microns in the can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what fineness are we talking about here? About 20 microns. 20 microns. OK. Can you tell us a little bit more about reactive rice husk ash and rice husk ash? What's the difference? Well, our speaker already mentioned that you you have um, the, if you transform <coughs> the material to, from, from um, uh, um, how do you call it? So Amorphous to crystalline. crystalline. You have a problem. Uh, because crystalline is not reactive anymore. So you need to, indeed, like you mentioned very well, also the, the temperature is very important and the holding time is very important. And that has to be mm. uh, industrially control that, that that can be done uh, but there are also uh, there is also a European e eco innovation project on rice in, in Greece but it, uh, also there they don't care about the, um, the reactivity of the rice they use it for something else so another waste <coughs> okay any other questions or points from the floor Okay, somehow we've managed to contrive to overrun in your time slot. So, <laughs> Thank you. So thanks very much indeed for that excellent discussion. Once again, Marianne, together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.